Here we are again, Chris. Hello, Narelle. You somehow got me behind the camera again. Yes, yes, we love you behind the camera. <laughs> we had lots of positive comments last time. Thank you very much for that. Thanks, guys. And so we've decided to keep doing conversations. <laughs> it's fun. Um, and life's short, so yep, I'm doing it. Um, okay, so today we actually thought you all might be interested in looking at Christine's travel diaries or... Um, sketchbooks so Christine is prolific with these she has years of them um, they're amazing <laughs> they're, they're yeah really really interesting so um, with what's been going on as well around the world um, some people haven't been able to travel but it doesn't mean you can't still keep diaries and do it in different ways so we thought we'd chat about that as well um, we're going to show some examples of your yes work. yes and okay yeah so I've been keeping diaries for many years, as Narelle mentioned, and I'm going to show you some, you some of the examples from these. Um, and of course, in the past, I would take them on my travels, mm -hmm. but been different. Mm -hmm. And we were in lockdown last year for a while. And so I started to do um, isolation or lockdown diaries. Yep. And I'm sure some of you are still in a difficult spot in Australia, we're fortunate because we can move around, but we can't mm -hmm. move outside Australia. Mm -hmm. So we can't travel overseas as we would like to. So today, we're going to take you through uh, Christine's toolbox, I suppose, again, um, for what she, you know, simple things that you can just take on the road with you anywhere, whether you're down at the local cafe having a coffee, if that's where you can go, yep. from home, um, those types of things. And then we'll also, Flip through some of Christine's um, journals and diaries, give you a demo of um, also how she goes about doing Yes, it. I thought I would um, do a sort of untravel travel section. And um, yes, I've got lots of things that I've done around the place. Mm -hmm. But we can also take photos uh, of places that we've been. So looking through your albums or your camera. Yep. And I thought I would do as a demonstration later in the video, uh, a scene from New York where my daughter was living at the time and I had a great time traveling around there. So that'll be my demo, a kind of untravel travel um, diary section. Yeah. And we will also um, show you some other bits and pieces, some resources and so on. So join us. Okay, I'll be back. <laughs> <laughs> And I'll just finish my cup of tea while Narelle gets organised. All right, great, Chris. We're all set up to have a look at your toolbox. Great. Well, I've got my toolbox set up for you. It looks like a lot of stuff, but I'm just going to show you some different um, books that I use because there are quite a variety on the market. So you can have one that's slightly bigger this has got toned pages it's a sewn together book so that you get um, if you want to do something panoramic you can paint right across uh, this is similar in that it's panoramic but it's a smaller book it's a lighter one it's got a an elastic band so you can hold it closed if you need to nice or one. hold it closed like that um, and it's you need something with reasonable quality paper by the way so try to spend some money rather than you know no money on it um, you can have a concertina type of book where you can actually make a, a full panorama and of course you can make something yourself um, by sticking pages together and I've done that in the past and this is a quite a small neat little book I love that it's and amazing. that's also got the elastic to hold it together nice this is the probably the commonest type with the spiral um, spine and it, it does sit nice and flat so that's great it might not be perfect when you want to do something right across two pages but in this particular one it, there is a, a perforated line there so you can actually tear the pages out and frame them if you want to um, so there we are there's there's a few variety of books I usually don't I mean that size I'll use um, when I'm sort of walking around or I've got something easy to manage. But 
I'll put this size or this size into my handbag. I have a reasonable size handbag and maybe just have a pen so that I've got a book and a pen so that I can do a quick sketch of something if I want to. Um, but you can do far more than that. There's more to come. <laughs> and rolling. Great. Okay, now I was going to show you what else I'd take on a more major expedition. So I have a backpack that I travel around with when I'm overseas and in Australia and I want to be quite serious. Um, and I also have an easel that's um, collapsible that only weighs one and a half kilos that fits into this bag and goes over my shoulder but can also be attached to my backpack. So when would you use these things? Would you take them on a road trip, say, or...? You look, you know, if you're going around uh, Paris, for instance, ah. walking around Paris, I'll take my backpack. I may or may not take the easel. Yep. Um, the easel's useful because um, if you take something slightly bigger, and I do carry these um, square um, watercolour pages that are 300 GSM and a clip, um, right and I can pop that onto there. So this will collapse right down. I can carry it around. Amazing. Um, and it can, and it's got long legs, so I can actually set it up. To and stand do a, or to a sit. Proper, proper drawing if I want to. Great. Um, so then inside my backpack, I have a little toilet bag that contains some paints. Uh, these uh, watercolor and gouache paints in a little palette. Oh yeah, great. Um, they're terrific. I take some brushes that have water in the handle. So um, you, you do need to carry some water, but you've already got some water in your brush. Yep. I do take um, a bottle of water in my backpack, but I don't fill it up because it's too heavy. <laughs> Good tip. And I have a collapsible water container. Oh, yep. Which is very useful. So usually I try and find somewhere where there is a bit of space that I can actually put these things down. And it might just be a wall or yep. a rock yep. or something like that. Um, sometimes it's a chair. And I have um, a pencil case. Now, it's full of pencils at right. the moment. I'm and just going to zoom different in markers. on that so people can get a look. Oh, yep. Yeah, lots of different markers. Some big thick ones, uh, some white ones and pencils, a rubber um, sharpener, very useful stuff. Um, I also have some gouache and watercolour paints in a little container, looks a bit messy, but also very useful um, because the little, uh, these are terrific, but I do need, they often need some deeper colour. Oh yeah. Um, and you can paint more like with acrylic or oil with gouache. So there's that, and my favourite pens, which are really important. You can see the style of painting I do. I often paint with colour and use pens, so it's a mixed media. Nice. So I'm imagining they're not water soluble. Look, you've got to be careful, and yep. you need to try them out. Um, I usually try and make sure that either the page is dry oh, before yep. I draw on it. Yep. Or if I don't mind having a bleed, um, it doesn't matter if it's wet, sometimes you will get a bit of a bleed with pens. Oh, yeah, true. So they all, they are all a bit different. Yeah, um, so you these, need to be aware. Yes. And I always them. get black pens. Yep. And I get them in different um, sizes. So this is, I think this is a one mil, and then you can get a half mil, etc. And they're a gel pen, so they have a... A rolling action and they're very nice and smooth, smooth. to use they're not biros yep. yeah and I, you can use felt tip pens oh, yeah. but I'm I, I prefer these yeah. so that's sort of your comprehensive kit that's yes. everything um, yes. if you're going to be serious but if you were just say a minimalist um, okay. toolkit if you were just going to your local cafe and you wanted to keep something in your handbag what's your well, what in my handbag, I would have a book, one of these, this size. I think this is A5. Yep. You might correct me if I'm wrong. Um, I would have my pen. Yep. And I would, I could, a little one of these. So this has only got, you know, they, they fit together. Very light. 
and a uh, and a brush and I'll pop that into my handbag or I can get some of it into the pocket of my jacket. Oh yeah, right. Mm. So that's yeah. That's all you need. So you don't need heaps. You can just have yeah. Absolutely. absolutely you minimum. don't need heaps. What you need is a mindset that oh, that's interesting. I might see if I can capture that. And really only you only need to get a few lines or a few colors. You don't have to do the whole thing. Yep. Um, so people get caught up in that and I will show you um, an exercise that I'm going to do but I don't always finish it in all at the same time. Yeah great that's a good tip too. So we might sit down and have a little flick through some of your sketchbooks now. Okay. So Chris let's flick through some of your sketchbooks. Sure. Now here's one from lockdown that was the plant intensive care bench outside my window I love it. and this was the coffee table um, next to me and I had all the things that I really needed on it <laughs> this is so good. Uh, on the road Richard and I were traveling down to South Australia and I often sketch while he drives that's a little gouache one nice. here I was in a cafe and there were Uber drivers waiting for the call to make deliveries, so I thought I'll just do a quick drawing of him on his motorbike. What a great capture. And the masked flight attendant as she came to serve us food on the flight from Sydney to Ballina. And then I was going to meet my friends in Sydney down at the Opera House. Um, from the other side of the harbour I was able to do a quick sketch in the rain. Nice. Oh, wow, that's a great view. So this is, if you can tell, I hope, Sydney Harbour Bridge. And I had lovely children come up to me while I was doing that one. Oh, nice. Oh, this one's very detailed. Yes, so this is more than just a sketch. But I'd started off like that, and it's a window shopping one. Well, you can always do window shopping. Waiting for a latte. That's a very quick sketch. Yep. Yep, so just with my stuff in my bag. Nice. And... Again, driving to South Australia, the Mallee trees have a lot of trunks and I was wanting to capture the colour and the fact that the Mallee trees are different. Yeah, great. All right, demo time. Um, that seems to it be is. all. You're going to make me nervous now? <laughs> <laughs> You're under okay. pressure. Yeah, under pressure. Now, um, I've actually set up um, my little um, travelling setup in an easier way. I've got a rag that I can put under everything. Yep. I'm actually wearing an ancient um, apron that's got a pocket in it because that's really useful um, and I don't need to look beautiful and I can scrunch this up into my backpack if I need to. So I've just laid out on my rag um, my paints etc and I'm going to start with painting and um, my view, I don't know if you can see it up here. Here we go, okay. So I'm just going to zoom in on that so people get a an okay. idea of what it is you're going to paint today. Great. So this is a view of a New York street and I'm not going to put everything into it. I'm just going to put in some of the things that interest me. I like the trees. I like the colour of the trees. I like the yellow New York taxi. I like this um, traffic light set up. It's very New York um, and some of the buildings and some of the cars. So it's just going to be a very rough, just to give people an idea of how I go about this. So you've blown this one up from um, just from your, your camera reel. Yes. Just yes. for this purpose today. Purpose but normally today. you just work off your camera or some of well, your holiday most, snapshots or... Yeah, most of the time I don't work off anything. I just plonk myself down on a bench. That's true. And do it. Yeah, yeah. But for the purposes of today, and if you want to capture a memory from a, a great travel um Thing that you've been on yeah you know you can do it from a photograph especially at the moment when you can't travel it's a way of I suppose revisiting those places without leaving your home that's right we have to we have to make it fun for ourselves and I, what I'm also showing you is that my little box of paints I can use as a palette and the lid of my little circular palettes oh, yeah. I can also use as a little palette oh yeah great okay so you, you, you become quite inventive. So what I'm going to start with in just capturing some of the scene here is I'm just going to, I, I really like the colour of those trees, so I'm just going to smear some bright orange into this um, area. I'm using this little palette and I'm using the uh, 
and the water brush. So I just want to get some colour into the scene and I always start with paint. I mean, I'm doing this upright for you today. Mm -hmm. Often it will be down uh, on the ground level. Yep. Um, and there are some traffic lights here that intrigue me and I like, I like the fact that they're there. It's very New York, these traffic lights that just have these three uh, lights, I guess. Oh, and they hang over. They're very different to And they else. hang over. They're different to the Australian one. And then there's, so there's, a, there's going to be a pole here and there's this bar here with these lights. And I just like this sort of effect that you're, you've got night time coming in. It just seems like it's coming into dusk or something. It's got a slightly um, mysterious atmosphere. True, and things like those traffic lights give a real sense of place. They really well, show yeah, where you that's actually are, My I memories suppose. of New York, I've drawn the traffic lights before. Um, and I'm just going to kind of, otherwise that's too much colour. I don't really want that much colour, so I'm just going to knock it back with white um, and just get some idea of the streetscape. So really all I'm doing is chucking in some colour. The drawing will come later and give you the idea of, of what's actually happening. Yeah, people might find scene. that quite surprising at how loose it is when you start. Yeah, um, I always do this. And people often ask me, do I do the drawing first? And the answer is no. I, the painting the painting comes first and the drawing comes second in my work. Yeah, so you're quite broadly putting in the shapes and form yeah. first. And it's, and it's not going to be realistic. Um, so don't have the huge expectations around that. I'm just going to take you down my path. And I suppose the point of your travel journaling is to capture a, a point in time, a memory, more so than the accurate That's um, exactly depiction. right. I'm not aiming for accurate um, buildings, accurate nature, but hopefully by the end you'll get a sense of what's actually happening um, and you are actually accurate you, you probably don't think you are and you're very loose in the way but you actually end up being you actually capture what's in front of you quite accurately anyway if that makes sense well it's nice of you to say that Narelle I appreciate that it doesn't always feel like that to me but um, well everything ends up in proportion and your composition ends up being um, very close to what it is that you can see so well, I think that's one of the things that people don't realise is that you develop a sense of what something is, ha what's happening without really realising it. Now, okay. Yeah, and that's practice and that's why you're prolific and why you are actually quicker and good at because you actually do keep these diaries all the time. Well, it's a kind of, it's what we call a sort of gestural drawing um, and you'll see that my drawings of people that I do in the street or sitting in a cafe uh -huh. are minimalist but often surprisingly recognisable. Yes, that's true. Now, I've got um, the bones of a composition here. Yep. So what I want to do is stop at this point and start to draw. Yep. Now, I, don't, I haven't been timing myself, but I'd say that I've probably been chucking paint on the paper for maybe four or five minutes yeah not even yep. maybe not even yep so just i want to get across to you that you don't have to spend hours you can spend hours yeah that's right but you don't have to yeah okay yep, so great. now i'm going to go we'll to the drawing phase So this is obviously a little wet. So when you're out doing this, would you work while it's still wet, or do you yeah, wait? Yeah, I don't. I often do, yeah. and sometimes it rains. Yeah, right. I mean, you know, yep. that's that's the facts, Jack. Yep. It yep. rains, and <laughs> you're sometimes right, yeah. your your pen runs, and it's it's just part of it. Yeah, and you're actually capturing some of the atmosphere. Yeah, and I suppose you remember all of those things when you're looking you back. You totally at them. do. You remember yep. the sound. You remember the smell. You yeah, remember the wind. Nice. Which and, we've talked and a bit all about part of it. with your landscape and plain air, so yeah. it's a similar feeling. Yeah, yeah. Yep, and I liking. actually love that. Yeah, I love capturing this kind of moment in time. Yeah, great. So now I've got a bit of a moment in time. Now it's difficult. It's more difficult, and it's a bit wet, so that'll probably run in in various places. But 
It's difficult sometimes to do this upright because the pen doesn't work so well. Yep. But I'm going to just start and then I may have to stop and, and yep, redo it. Yeah, I can it. probably follow you if you need to lay it down. Okay. So what I do now, once I've got some, some colour, I then start to play with the pen. And, I, I you know, it's not going to be perfect. I start to find the elements that are going to work for me, like these trees. And I like, I just like the line of the trees. And there is a car here. So I might just put the back of the car in. And, and you know, sort of get a rough idea of a car. It's not going to be perfect. But uh, there's a couple of wheels under there. That'll give you a clue that it's a car if it doesn't look like a car otherwise. Um, and there's a, there's a back window, of course. So you start to sort of look for and play with some of these elements. And obviously there's a street there. And there are some buildings behind, some yep. quite tall buildings. So I'll just start to kind of knock them in. And that'll give you a sense of place a bit. Um, and you can, you can kind of make this work more by chucking a few windows or something. Uh, that'll, and, and you can put in a, a sign. Um, and the tree can come out here a bit. So it's all artistic license. You're <laughs> not doing what's actually there. Uh, and what I really like, so you, you can see that we're starting to get a bit of a street scene. Yeah. Um, and it might need more colour, but this will be fine to start with. Now I'm interested in this um, pole, this light pole. And so I just want to play with putting that in because that is right. Wow, that was a quick transition. Sorry about that. We actually <laughs> ran out of battery. Now yep. we're going to our time lapse. Yes. So these things happen to even the best producers. That's it. So you just continued drawing yes. at this point. Yeah. So the colours there and I drew in and I drew more and added a bit of colour when I needed to. Um, so it's really basically a transition from one stage to the next. Okay, great. So I've got this picture pretty close to what I want because it's captured most of the important elements. I'm going to use a bit of gouache now. Gouache is a bit thicker than watercolour and I can paint over the top of things and I wanted to get a bit of a yellow taxi in, a yellow New York taxi. So I'm just going to pop a bit of that in there, try and pep up the, the colour a bit. Oh, yep. Um, put some lights on the back of that car. Just put a bit more yellow into the tree. Give it a bit of a highlight there. Um, a bit more yellow, perhaps, in the traffic light and down here that's actually a hand that's green and it tells you you can go so mm -hmm. left that there um, there's some bright yellowy colors in the bar here um, so we'll just pop some of that in just to give it a bit more life um, it may not be absolutely true to uh, the way it actually is but I think you can see that we've got a number of the elements that I was after. Now I'm going to actually put a little bit of a, a bit more colour just into that pole. So you're going back in really and defining the compositional pieces that are going to really make it pop and make it give it the sense of place. Exactly. You, you don't have to paint everything immediately. Um, you can come back and do a bit of a touch-up. I, mean, I do that. I mean, I don't do that all the time. But if I've got something that I kind of quite like and I think it'll benefit from being um, a, having a bit more done to it, I'll do that. 
I suppose it's like most art too. It's a bit of a dance, a back and forwards, you know, stepping back, seeing what you need to change or add or omit. Uh, yep. I, I think a dance is a very good way of describing it. Art is a bit of a dance. Um, so you just never know exactly how it's going to turn out. I think I was saying to you earlier that it's a relief when it does work if you're doing it in front of the camera because <laughs> quite often they don't. That's it, all well, this uh, one's working. Yeah, so I just want to give you the idea of how I would attack something uh, even if I don't get it perfectly right. And I suppose for people to, to know that you, you can tweak it a bit. You don't, you know, your, your sketch isn't your final, that's all you, you know, if you don't get it quite right, you can go back in again. You can move yep. things around. You can, yep. even though you feel like it's permanent, you've got a permanent marker happening, you, you've gone back in and changed elements with some paint, which is why gouache is so great. It's so good. With. And these mark, these pens are great. Um, you know, you can, there's a tree there, and I have put the tree in, but it's not, terribly obvious but you know you can go back in with the pen and just you know push it it's a bit difficult to draw upright, upright yep. but uh, you can make those branches more obvious which because this would have been in in march i think in new york and it was freezing it was right. really cold um, and i was wearing gloves and a jacket so You've still got these trees with no leaves because they've got all the deciduous trees. Yeah. Um, so, you know, make a feature of things that you remember. Goodness me, I went to I went to Washington and the cherry blossom was out and it was beautiful, but I couldn't draw it because my fingers were so frozen. Oh, wow. Absolutely frozen. So trying to draw with gloves on is another challenge. <laughs> yep. But possible. Possible. Uh, there you are. So that's that tree is more obvious and you could make more of these trees too. So, you know, line and wash. So this is pen and wash really. Yeah. And you go back and forth with both until you're happy with your sketch. Exactly. And then there's a bit of a, there's some buildings behind, etc. So I think everyone can see from this that if you were actually there, this is the kind of sketch you could get done as well, but you yeah. can also do it from, from your well, it references. Well, hasn't, it hasn't taken very long, really. No. Um, and if you are prepared to sit yourself on up somewhere, I usually, on if I'm on a corner like that, uh, I'll usually tuck myself into a shop front yep. or a shop window ah. and get the view and I can lay my paints on the window ledge right. and I can tuck in and, and do a bit of a drawing and a painting. And people will just kind of pass by. Every now and then somebody will say something, yep. which is quite nice because yeah, right. you get to know, you know, people. And I've had in France, I've had um, old French women with their shopping baskets say, Bon courage, madame, <laughs> etc. Uh, and in yeah, other places. And they say nice things usually. So nice. And if you get any little children coming up, they are always fascinated. It levels out the ages. Yeah, right. And and a nice way to connect and meet locals while you're yeah, travelling. Absolutely. Yeah. yeah. So enjoy yourself. Go out and in, enjoy it. Okay, so we're just going to wrap it up now with the final. Tell us a bit about the final bits and pieces you actually added. Right, so you probably remember that I was at a stage where I was drawing in. Um, and so I've just continued to draw in. I've put more people in or I've made some people more obvious. I've um, you know, added a bit to the cars. I decided that there was a big empty space down here, so I actually painted the road in a bit more and I put a woman walking her dog. There seemed to be a lot of those in New York. And I just emphasised trees um, and perhaps a little bit more colour and the, the, um, the traffic light system. So I didn't do a whole lot, but probably used my pen a bit more and just emphasised. Uh, I think it's come up fantastic, Chris. And um, yeah, good example of how you actually go about it. 
So that's New York. That was actually down in the um, the, the village end, which was fun. Great. Yes. And I think you've got a few uh, reference books too that you love to use. Well, uh, these I've, I've, I've purchased this one from um, England. Um, it's uh, a fellow called Phil Dean. He's the urban sketcher on um, uh, on Instagram, and I follow him. But he's got he's put out this book, and it's really useful. Um, he talks about um, and and shows you um, how to draw, how he starts. He does a lot of his with ink, with an ink pen, um, but he also does some colouring. And he has a different system to me. But you might find that really useful. Oh, nice. So it's called, oh, sorry, it's called Urban Drawing by Phil Dean. And it's in the Tate um, series. And this little booklet was put out by um, an artist from this area, Jan Ray, uh, called Travel Sketches. And she's just got some delightful sketches um, that I think most of them were done in Mexico or at least in South America. So, so that's fun too some great examples of uh, other people's travel diaries yep, yes. and different ways of going about it. Yes, yes, yes. So we all do different things, but it's fun to do. And so what we would like to say to you, our audience, and we're very appreciative, we're actually up to 101 subscribers now. Yay! Please like our videos. Please share our videos if you'd like to. Please give us feedback. We'd like to know what it is that you like about them maybe what you don't like. We do wonder whether we actually do some things take too long over them. So we'd like feedback on that. And um, just, yeah, just keep watching. Yep, please. that'd be great. <laughs> Thank you.